Great to see everybody uh, logged in here and getting set up. Um, we're going to get started in about a minute. So thank you very much. We about get about a minute and kick everything off. Okay, so thank you everybody for attending today. Um, my name is Brian Mole. I am the Director of Marketing for Critical Design Associates, and we're proud to bring you our webinar today entitled A Complete Guide to Upgrading Absence and Avanti User Workspace Manager. So I'm going to let you know right away that this webinar is definitely geared towards the administrator of an Absence or an Avanti UWM uh, environment. If you're looking to upgrade to the latest version, you're at the right place. If you are looking to see some of the newer features of, of UWM, you're also at the right place as well. So let's get started. Um, I'm kicking things off here for the first five minutes, gonna give you a brief interview of critical design, and then I'm gonna pass the presentation over to Christian Myers. He'll be our present presenter for today. And then we'll have an interactive question and answer session at the end. Um, I'm encouraging everybody to use the Q&A function uh, within the webinar software. Um, participation is encouraged, but I will be muting viewers during the presentation just to make sure that we don't break the flow. So on the, this line today, I have myself, Marketing Director, there's Christian Myers, he's on his professional services team. We also have Todd Prokop, he's our account manager, and Susan Lewis, she's our marketing coordinator. If you've received an email invite for this webinar, most likely it came from Susan, so uh, big thanks to my team. You know, so why critical design? Why, why should we be presenting today? Well, we recently were named new partner of the year by Avanti. Um, we're not new to the Avanti products by any means. Um, we've been working with the Absence uh, products since 2005, and we have multiple people on our team that are user workspace manager experts, one of which being our presenter today, Christian Myers. You know, some facts about critical design. You know, we were founded in 2001. Our focus then was on project consulting, managed services, and staffing. Um, as of today, our headquarters is in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and the customers that we focus on are Fortune 1000 companies, usually companies with 1,000 seats or more. And, you know, we do work with companies smaller than that, but I'd say that's where we shine is with the, the, the companies uh, that are, that, you know, have a th Fortune 1000 companies. So what do we do today? We, we still focus on consulting, managed services, staffing, uh, the verticals that we service, financial, healthcare, energy, oil, gas, power in general, uh, manufacturing, legal, education, and retail. And the practice areas we focus on, application delivery and packaging, endpoint management, cybersecurity, and regulatory compliance. And within the last, I'd say 14 to 16 months, we've rolled out our ITSM, IT service management, and ITS, ITAM, IT asset management practice. So you notice here I say we're a service-based organization. I bring this up because there's organizations like ours that might have 20 salespeople and five engineers. We're the exact opposite. We're engineering heavy. We have 20 engineers and five office people. So we're service-based organization, engineering heavy, and our, our clients seem to really appreciate that. We also invest heavily with our, in our people, which brings me to my next slide. You know, our pillars of success, people, process and platform within our own team we are constantly cross training going to conferences going to meetup groups um, training between team members training on our own just to be the best possible and why that's because we're ultimately deciding the process that's going to sol solve a business challenge for our clients and that's married up with the proper software platform so people the proper process married up with the right platform it's a symbiotic relationship which is the the pillars of the success of critical design associates we also follow a strict methodology, you know, project analysis starts first, then we design a solution, then we build the solution, we test it in our lab, and then we deploy it to our live environment. And we rinse and repeat with this. We do not deviate from this. This is yet another crucial factor to our success. 
You know, this is a laundry list of the solutions that we offer. I'm not going to go through all this right now, but it's just a deeper dive of what I mentioned earlier. And these are some of the partners that we, you know, provide value added services and we resell for as well. And I also want to let you know if you like what you're hearing to do a virtual live instructor led training uh, one day course on October 23rd, 2019 uh, from 10 to 5. So I'll make sure that I have uh, I put a link out for that in, 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 later on in the presentation. So let's get started. I'm ready to pass the presentation over to Christian. He's going to be your speaker. Christian, I'm going to stop the share and let you take it from here. Thanks, Brian. So I'm going to just pop this up. You see my screen? Yes. Okay. So as Brian said today, the main focus is about uh, upgrading from AppSense 8.6 to Avanti User Workspace Manager 10.x. Uh, like you said, my name's Christian. Uh, I'm a consultant here at CDA. Uh, I've been working on User Workspace Manager for about two years now. Uh, I've done about 20 upgrades, and for those upgrades, it's been about 100,000 users roughly. So the first major change for um, desktop now is that it actually got a new name change. So uh, AppSense was acquired by Avanti and they renamed it User Workspace Manager. Uh, you can see here is the full spectrum for User Workspace Manager and Desktop Now. Uh, desktop Now is the core product, so Application Control, Environment Manager, Performance Manager, and Management Center. Uh, and then the full User Workspace Manager suite is File Director and Insight also included. Some of you may be asking, why should I upgrade? You know, AppSense is working great right now. Uh, I don't have any issues, um, but uh, we want to make sure you get the latest updates and fixes. Uh, there are a ton of new features. Um, 8.6 is no longer supported, uh, so we want to get you on a supported version uh, that is support, supported by Avanti. And one of the biggest things is Windows 10 and Server 2016. We have conditions and support for them now with the newer versions. So for the Management Center, we'll jump right into the updates. Uh, it has an updated UI, uh, easy reassignment of mis, uh, misgrouped computers if one found its way in the wrong group, however uh, that may be. Uh, Windows Server 2016 and Windows 10 support. Um, and one of the cool features is actually event maintenance schedules. If you guys have a SQL script that cleaned up you know, old events, uh, they actually integrated that into the console. And also we have SQL mirroring available now too. So here's a list from 10.1 to 2019.1 of all of the features that uh, have been added. Uh, I'll stay on this for a second if you guys want to read over it. So moving on then, Environment Manager, and this is where the bulk of the updates have actually occurred. So in Environment Manager, we have Outlook setup actions such as uh, creating a default profile when the user first logs in and tries to launch uh, Outlook, as well as creating signatures for them if they don't already have them. Uh, we have Windows 10 personalization templates and group policy uh, action enhancements. Um, and one of the really cool features of 2019.1 is actually you can connect to your domain controller and it'll create all the group policy actions for you um, automatically. Uh, Windows Server 2016 support um, and Microsoft Office 2016 lockdown. If there are certain features you don't want them, uh, your end users to be able to use, uh, we can lock those features down. Uh, Geosync was also added. It is a replication. Um, so essentially you can have two live uh, personalization databases uh, and every night they sync so they have the most up-to-date uh, information for the user. Um, this is great for users that travel. Um, so they can go from your London office to your New York office and have all their personalization the way they, when they were uh, left London. Um, and Windows Settings Group. So Windows Settings Groups reply, replaces Hiving. Um, it allows you to keep all of your Windows settings, such as your desktop, your uh, wallpaper, and your taskbar. Task uh, they all get sucked up in the personalization database now instead of staying on a file share. Again, here's all the list of all the updates through 2019.1.
application control, we added custom rules. And what custom rules is, is you can create a VB script or a PowerShell script. And from that, uh, you can create any condition you can imagine and you can tailor it custom to your environment. Uh, Windows 10 conditions and uh, per item auditing and extended auditing. And the coolest feature I think for application control that was added is uh, silently block executables. So if any of you have ever blocked OneDrive, uh, you'll notice every time you log into the computer, it pops up a uh, application execution denied. And we can actually suppress that message for us uh, so we don't pop up every time. And here's a list of everything. Okay, so Performance Manager is the one that's least updated. Um, so all it has is just support for Windows Server 2016 and Windows 10. And there's a couple other, they updated the UI and an icon refresh. So that one's a relatively small one. File Director um, allows us to do some auditing events. Google Drive Connector is finally in. Uh, it used to only be connected to OneDrive, but now it's also connected to Google Drive. So that's really cool. And the list. And then finally, Insight. So Insight is actually officially end of life. Um, it's actually replaced with Avanti Cloud now. So Avanti Cloud is going to be taking its place in the uh, user workspace manager uh, suite. And we can see that here. So we'll jump into the types of upgrades that we have. And there's two main types. There's an in-place upgrade, which is what it sounds. Uh, you upgrade in place. The software it gets upgraded on the existing server. Then we will connect to the database and upgrade the schema, push the new agents, and then push the new configurations. The other type is a parallel upgrade. So we provision new servers. Uh, user Workspace Manager is installed on those new servers, and the SQL databases are copied to the new SQL server as well. Uh, we make connections to that database, upgrade, uh, update the URLs uh, to connect, and then upgrade the agents and configurations. So many of you probably are wondering which one's better. Uh, the trend today uh, is parallel, mostly, uh, just because we can implement newer versions of the server OS. Uh, when you installed 8.6, it was 20, 2008, 2012, uh, and they're starting to get a, a, a end of maintenance. So getting it on the 2016 isn't a bad idea. Um, we can also do a staged approach. So we can stand everything up, get everything tested with some test users, and then cut over all the production. And then we have a quicker rollback. All you have to do if, you know, for whatever reason, the upgrade fails, all you have to do is go back to your old server and deploy the client communication agent again, and you're back over to the old server. So gives you a little bit more flexibility. Uh, it's the way I definitely recommend. Upgrade compatibility. Um, so user workspace manager is officially supported for two versions upgrade uh, for environment manager or three version upgrade for uh, anything if you don't have personalization enabled. Um, larger jumps aren't tested and they're not officially supported by Avanti support. Um, so if you do have an issue when you try to do a larger jump, uh, they don't, they aren't much help. We're going to go into user workspace manager 10 requirements. And here's an example of an infrastructure of a single role server. You can see we have our computers connecting to one server that has both personalization and management server on it. And then we also have a dual role. We can see we split each role. Um, this is used for uh, customers that have over 10,000 users, um, just so both of the servers can function more efficiently. Management server requirements. If you're going to stand up new management servers, uh, use just very basic two vCPUs, four gigabytes of RAM, and 40 gigabytes for the OS partition, and .NET 4.0. The same for personalization as well, except for you need .NET 3.5. You'll need two service accounts when you set up 8.6. Uh, you used a configuration and a service account. The configuration account was the one that actually set up the databases uh, and that's one we'll need sysadmin privileges for to do an upgrade and then we also have the service account which communicated between the application and the database itself 
So we'll need both of those accounts um, to do our upgrade. SQL requirements is just 2012 SP3 or newer. Um, I would recommend doing 2016 if you, uh, if you have it available. And CPU and memory requirements vary based on the size of the deployment. So you guys gotta kind of gauge that yourself. For Windows 7, uh, you need the SHA-256 code signing uh, patches installed. Uh, but if you're regularly patching, uh, they should be already installed. You should be good to go. Firewall, just basic ports, 80443, 135, 445. So standard ports. Uh, you'll see for the client communication agent is 7751 and uh, environment manager agent 7771. Uh, with a script that we actually use in the setup, we all move it back to port 80. Those are the new ports. Um, it was designed for multiple instances to be allowed to run on one server. Now we'll go into the upgrade process itself. Uh, so there's a sequence. We do the personalization and the management server, upgrade them first, uh, which will in turn upgrade the consoles as well. Then we upgrade the SQL database, then we do the agents, and then finally the configurations. And we do agents before configurations because the agent can read an old configuration, but the old agent can't read a new configuration. So for file director and insight, uh, the upgrade process is relatively simple. You just take the patch provided by Avanti off the website, uh, upload it, and it'll actually do the upgrade for you. Uh, in clustered environments, the SQL database will be updated automatically, and then you just deploy the new agents, whether that's through the management center or uh, if you use a script. Uh, so for the server slash console upgrade, you'll just uh, run new installation media and you can see on the right side of the picture there's an option to upgrade just follow the install prompts and install the prerequisites database upgrade for in place we want to take a backup of the database just in case anything gets corrupted we can easily roll back uh, we'll use the server configuration portal or the powershell script i talked a little bit about earlier uh, when the prompt appears to update the schema just click yes and then we'll test connection to the management console and the environment management console just to verify that we do have connection. Okay, so for a parallel upgrade, we're gonna copy the databases to the new SQL server, and then the process is the same. We use our PowerShell script, update the schema, and then test the connections. Here's an example of what the script would look like, and the information that you have to input for the script. So the SQL server, an instance, the configuration account, the service account, and then it, this is the prompt for uh, if you need to upgrade this schema, it'll ask you if you want to. Agents upgrade. Uh, so we'll select the deployment group and then select the newest agents in the packages. Uh, they should be upgraded before the configurations, like I said before. Um, generally, if we're going from 8.6 to 10.1, which is an intermediate step we have to take, we do the client communication agent first, and then we do the environment manager, application control and performance manager agents. Configuration update. Uh, to update the configuration, you just launch the consoles and then open the old version. Uh, you're gonna get a prompt to say, uh, this configuration needs to be upgraded. Click okay, it upgrades it, you save as, and it will save it as a new configuration for you in the management center. Uh, upgrade considerations uh, for parallel upgrades. You'll need to store the new encryption key for the management server. If uh, you don't know what that is, the encryption key is used by the management server to authenticate, to say, okay, I'm a, a verified uh, management server. So we have to upgrade that in the uh, server configuration portal. We have to update the global failover site list in the management center, and then update the sites list and personalization console. Upgrade considerations for both in place and parallel. We need to change agent installation from startup to shutdown. Uh, this will re avoid a double reboot. Um, and we need to refine the EM configuration as new triggers may be available. Uh, so essentially, log on got split into three triggers and refine personalization as well, getting those uh, window settings groups up and starting to take hiving out. 
upgrade caveats. If load balancing uh, is recommended, make sure the server is offline just so you don't have any um, weird uh, issues. Uh, ensure all users are connected for the personalization database. We don't want any users uh, being corrupted or uh, losing any data. Consoles must be upgraded before the agents and replication must be broken before upgrades. So if you're doing, you know, uh, SQL mirroring, you have to break that before we can do the upgrade. Here's an example of a load balancer configuration for a Netscaler, uh, including the custom monitors that are uh, mandatory for EM. We also have a cool migration tool. It's called EMP Migrate. Um, so this is found in the installation media in a MSI called Environment Manager Tools. Uh, and what this does is if you have two databases that have different users in them, but you want to combine them, it'll actually combine them for you. And the da databases just must be on the same schema level. And here's the, the interface. And now we'll hop into the demo. So for the demo, I actually went ahead and uh, did a little work before. So what I did was I imported the 8.6 databases into my new SQL Server. Uh, so we have the management server and the personalization server database. And then I went ahead and I installed 10.1 on my new management and personalization servers. So let me log into both of these. Okay. So the first step we're going to do is we're going to open up PowerShell and we're going to run our, our uh, script to upgrade the databases. So we have our script here. This is not a signed script. It was written by a worker at Avanti. Uh, so it doesn't have a certificate on it. So we have to do set execution policy, unrestricted. And just yes. And we can run the script. We'll run it once. It's going to do some installation and collecting data. While that's doing that, we'll flip over to our personalization server and do the same. While both of those are running, I can give you a little context into what this does. Um, so in 10.1 and up, uh, the management server and the personalization server both get their own website. Um, so what this script does is it brings it back to the default website, kind of make it a little bit more standard, as well as I talked about those ports that we were using, 7751 for the management server and 7771 for the personalization server. We actually moved those back to port 80 just to Again, kind of keep it standard. So once this is done installing, let's see how that one's done. Okay. We get our pop-up here. I got to put in my SQL server. My SQL server is called SQL SQL3. We're going to use an impersonated auth uh, authentication for our config account. And my config account is CFG app. And we'll do the same for the service account. And mine is SVC app. Once we have all our information put in, we just go ahead and hit go. And in a second here, oops, helps if you type your username right. We can see here. Uh, personalization server is out of date and requires upgrading. Do you want to upgrade? Yes. So this is going to update the schema for us up to the 10.1 version. Let's check on this over here. Well, that's upgrading. We'll go ahead and do the same one here.
Okay, so that one's all done. So we can close out of that script. So we're going to upgrade the management database as well. All right, so while that's doing that, we can hop over to our personalization server and go into the EM console. We have to do some updates to uh, personalization. So if we go into user personalization, we connect. And we go down into our sites list. So since we're using a new server, we have to remove the old server. And since we're using port 80, we need to update the port as well. And all of those are written live to the database. So those updates are saved already. No need to make any changes. And here is the Windows personalization that I talked about. And we can see there's a lot of different settings. We can do taskbar, Windows appearance, action center accessibility. So a lot of the most common things that were hived uh, are already in the console. And so this one upgrade the database is just moving the website over to the default website now. So we'll just give this a second. All right, so we can see it completed. The errors are normal for an upgrade. So everything looked good there. So now what we wanna do is we wanna go into the server configuration portal and we're gonna update our encryption key. We do that by going to management servers, name the server, default, and then encryption. Sometimes this takes a minute. generate a new key. All right, so now we see that our encryption, encryption status is valid. So we'll go over to our management server now. Management console, I apologize. going to fail the first time because we have to change the port here as well. And those are the only two places you have to change, should have to change the port. When we log in, we're going to get a uh, message saying you need to update your licensing. So we'll go over to licensing and we'll add our new license. So we have our new license there. Uh, we need to go to global settings now. And we can see in our failover list, we still have our old server. So we need to remove that server and add the new server. So UWM03 and port 80. We have to go to client access credentials and re-add our client access credentials as well. And then finally, we can go to our deployment group. We're gonna to go to settings and we're gonna change this from startup to shutdown, and we'll submit that. And finally, we're gonna to go to packages. We're gonna update the management center agent first. So quick setup, use the drop down here to 10.1. 
and review and submit that. And then we're going to take these and install deployment agents. And we can see here, this one just pulled in. We can tell it needs to downgrade in a package and it's pending install. So we'll give this one a second and then we're going to pull it again and it'll start saying downloading. There we go. Once the demo package is downloaded, uh, we know that we should be good to go on uh, doing reboots to the servers or the, the endpoints. Uh, the client communication agent when doing an upgrade does require a reboot for a clean uninstall. Okay, so win 7-86, we can go over to that here. I believe that's this one. And we can restart. rebooting and we're just waiting for that one to come up. Okay, so this one's ready as well now. So we'll give those a second reboot. And while we're doing while we're waiting on that, we can actually open up the consoles. So we can go to we'll start performance manager first. Generally with an upgrade, we don't upgrade the performance manager package just because they are uh, generally Vanilla. You just physical desktop and just save it back to the management console. We can close out of that console. Application control will do we'll do environment manager next. Like the newest package. It tells us uh, the configuration's old version of Environment Manager. Uh, would you like to update the conversion? Yes. And then it gives us a little bit of detail on uh, everything uh, that is updated. And one thing we want to do is go to Advanced Settings and Configuration Settings and change this mid session config change to at logon instead of immediately. Save this configuration back to the Management Center. And then finally, we have to do the application control agent. Nothing we have to update in here, so we just save it back to the management center. Okay, now we can see that we're 100% for the management center agents. So we can go to packages. Next, we're gonna do the, uh, the agents for everything else. So we're gonna do a quick setup and we're gonna go to 10.1 for the agents. Next and next. And then we're gonna use the drop down, go back to 8.6 for the configuration. I've seen some issues when you try to deploy the configuration and the agent at the same time, so we try to split them up. We can submit that change force our computers to pull. And 
And while these are pulling, the reason we changed that mid-session um, config change to at startup is because uh, in the new versions, if you push a configuration out while somebody's online, it's actually going to drop all their drive mappings uh, because it's waiting for those triggers. So we don't want them to lose their drive mappings or their printing mappings or anything like that. So we uh, just wait until the next logon to apply the settings. Just got to wait for this to say uh, pending install and we can give these a reboot again. Okay, so the second one is ready. Let's go ahead and restart this. You can see we're configuring one of five updates for that. And looks like the first one's ready as well. So we'll wait for this one to come back up. And then finally, after we do our uh, agent changes, we're going to do our configuration changes. And this is the jump from 8.6 to 10.1. We have that intermediate step. And then we're going to do an in-place upgrade uh, to 2018.3 or 2019.1, whatever your preference is. Uh, but unfortunately, we're a little short on time today. Uh, so we're only going to get to the end of this 10.1 uh, upgrade. See, this one's almost finished up here. Give it another second or two, and we should get a reboot. This is where patience comes in. <laughs> Brian, while we're waiting, is there any questions in the uh, chat? Yes. Our first one is, are there any settings that should be re revisited after the upgrade, you know, to take care, to take advantage of the new features? So one of the settings, I, I kind of went over a couple of them. It was that change the startup to shutdown in the management console. So if we go to settings here, we want to go to installation and change this from startup to shutdown. That just avoids a double reboot. Um, uh, it applies on shutdown, as you can see, rather than as soon as it uh, reboots, it applies as soon as it reboots, then it has to shut down again. Um, another setting that you want to consider, uh, but it is a 
setting you need to setting you need to be careful with is it's a setting called FBR to Hive. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, not there. So if we go over to user personalization, we'll connect here. and advanced settings. There's a setting called FBR to Hive, and that is going to go from the file-based registry to a Hive registry, which essentially allows you to um, use personal, uh, personalization becomes a lot more efficient. Um, but there is a caveat with this, uh, with this setting is it is irreversible. So you need to take a backup of your database, make sure your database is healthy before you do flip this to true. Um, those are the two main uh, settings that you want to revisit after uh, upgrading. Got another question as well. I'm upgrading from 10.1, 10.2, or even .3. Will an in-place upgrade be suffice? You know, what would be the drawbacks from going this route? Um, we will be using this, the same OS. So if you're using 2016, if you're fine with whatever OS uh, 10.1 or 10.2 or 10.3 is on, uh, it's perfectly fine to do an in-place upgrade. That's actually what we do generally, uh, is once we get the new server OS, we do an in-place upgrade for it. And I believe, so we have our So we have our two uh, endpoints that are at 100% now. So the final step in the upgrade is the upgrade, the actual configurations. So let's go here. And that one. When we review and submit this change, have these two pull in. And once the 10.1 packages are installed, the intermediate step of upgrading the 10.1 is now complete. You can do your testing, go through all that, make sure everything's still working. And then uh, we actually do an in-place upgrade to 2018.3 or 2019.1, whichever is you're choosing. And just to circle back on the first question. Um, so some of the settings that are added, I kind of mentioned this in the actual slideshow, is the maintenance schedules. So we can add new schedules now to re remove events older than. This will clean up if you have like a 9,000 auto event for um, execution denied for application control. We can clean up the events older than say 30 days. And this will keep your management database um, relatively smaller. Uh, so you don't have as much bloat. Um, for personalization, uh, we recommend uh, if you have application personalization for Chrome, the best practice is actually moved over to uh, Windows settings groups for Chrome. It works a little bit better. And finally, um, archive, archive will clean up. Just if you have archives for personalization, uh, go ahead and just make sure that you, know, you clean up and have it in a reasonable amount. Uh, because the setting went from three archives, I'm sorry, five archives to three archives. So there's a little bit of cleanup to do there as well. So yeah. I've got another question as well, um, Christian. I don't know if you can if you can answer this one, but uh, the question from Derek, you know, he saw that the Vonti license had to be updated when going from version 8.6 to 10.1. Do you have to update the Avanti license, licenses when upgrading to 10.1 to the latest version, let's say 10.3? No, so 10.1 licensing, so the licensing scheme changed in 8.x to 10.x. Um, so anything 10.x or 2018.x uh, can use the same licensing. Great, I have one other question then. Is uh, Hopefully I read this right. What is the recommended SQL high availability method after the upgrade and how difficult is it to migrate? So most of, let me think about this one for a second. 
SQL always on is the recommended, um, just to have, you know, it always, it ships all the logs over uh, immediately and then it does automatic DR failover if the primary goes down. Uh, you just need a uh, uh, three peers to form a quorum. Uh, and then when two of them see that the primary is down, it fails over to one of the secondaries. Uh, and you can actually have a file share as a peer as well if you only have two sites. Um, so it's definitely recommended uh, to do always on. Uh, and that's the practice that we've been generally doing. Okay, great. Any questions rolling in? This is great. Thank you, everybody, for participating. Um, question from Johnny. I see status offline in our environment as well. Even through the PC, PC VM will be online and communicating with the management server. Why is that? So sometimes when the computer goes to sleep, uh, it thinks that it's offline even though it pulls in. Um, and also, if your computer is turned off, you could actually, if, if you just saw this one was said it was offline, if it misses a certain amount of poll periods, it shows itself as offline. Um, and it takes four or five poll periods to show that it's actually back online then. Okay. That might be all the questions that we have for now. You know, I'd, I'd like to thank everybody for, uh, for participating. And, uh, you know, I just want to let everybody know, once again, we are having a, a one-day training coming up for uh, AppSense UWM Upgrade Training from Christian on October 23rd. It's a one-day virtual live instructor-led training. We will make sure that everybody gets this link in the follow-up email. Um, I'll see if I can go ahead and uh, paste it in the chat as well. And, uh, you know, thank you for attending today. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to any of us here at Critical Design. And uh, we thank you for attending today.